first off, really, every single morning I wake up, uh, I was get it. I will have a random number on my phone texting me saying it's from a certain team. That's kind of the, all the motivation I need to get up and just work hard because I know mm-hmm. what those teams expect of me if they draft me or not. They expect me to come in, you know, the best condition as I can, you know, knowing the playbook and things like that. So really, every single time I wake up in the morning, I'll have a different number on my phone. And it's just like, you know, we're checking in on you. How are you doing? What are you doing today to get better? Tell my people we go. Tell my people we go. Yeah. Another day, another opportunity. It's the Good Podcast. I'm your host, Stu Holt. Here with my co-host, as always, he is Hollywood JJ Thomas. What's good? Very good. Good. How you, how you feeling, man? I'm, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling honored to be in both of y'all's presence. Good. It's always good to be around family and friends and people who just give you good company. So, mm. good, to, uh, good to be seen. Good, good. Definitely good to be seen in the midst of the the chaos that's going on right now man you know it's it's good to uh be able to do something like this it really is so um we have a special guest with us today mm-hmm. um he is the one and only someone we have interviewed before so this is like a part two it's like a follow-up exactly um and he is the one and only josiah scott good my guy mm-hmm. man how's it going going good man we appreciate you man appreciate yeah, you problem. For sure, you know, is this is it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good for sure. Yeah, I remember we were, um, me and Josh were going to a high school game. You were playing Centerville, and it was raining. I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I remember it yeah. was raining, and they cheated because I was coming, and I didn't even get a chance <laughs> to see the full game. And I think I I may have seen it, but I remember this picture vividly. There was a picture of you getting an interception in that game, and you elevated so high. <laughs> to get that pick over like two two receivers to say I think it was like one or two receivers but just thinking about from 2016 and now mm-hmm. and I was talking to Stu about like different themes and just things that came came into my heart and I know Drake has a song called Elevate mm-hmm. so I think about like even though that you may be shorter than people you were able to elevate over people to, to get the interception or to elevate to get to where you wanted to get to and four years later here we are Hmm. So, you know, um, really it just goes to show to the kids who are in middle school or in high school that they, you know, they want to go to college and get the degree or they want to go to college and be a college athlete or play professionally one day. You mm-hmm. can do that if you elevate hmm. and you got to rise about rise above the competition and rise above your situation. Right. So, but you know, you, that, that stuff is easier said than done. Very good. You know, and so. Uh, what do, what do you think, man? When it comes to elevating, mm-hmm. what do you think are some of the key things? You know what I mean? When it comes to going from, because like I said, we interviewed you like four years ago. Mm-hmm. So to go from where you were then to where you are now, you mm-hmm. know, what do you think are some key ingredients? Yeah, to that? Um, I definitely think like the number one thing is you have to have fun with it because I feel like in anything in life, like you're not having fun, you're not enjoying doing what you're doing. Like if it's not your passion, then you're not gonna do anything. You're not gonna put forward like the effort, the hundred and ten percent. And so when I first got off to college, that was really the thing. It's like when I first got there, I it, it was a big wake up call just because when I got there, you know, we did a way more running than I ever did in high school. So it was more of me after that day, me looking back and reflecting like, you know, do I really love football? Do I really want to do this long term? Do I want do I see myself doing this, you know, at a high level? And so when I reevaluate everything, you know, I kind of put the things in forefront in my mind. It's like, you know, I love this game. You know, I've been playing this for I don't know how long. And so that was really the number one thing. Like, you have to have fun doing what, whatever you're doing. So it makes you push you to be better than what you were before. And uh, I think another thing is, is like, once you're having fun with it, you know, you want to put all your hard work and effort into it. So you have to think about other people across the country. Like, what are they doing? You know, do you, mm-hmm. do you think they're getting up at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. doing things that I'm doing right now? Are they staying up late doing film studies and things like that? So I feel like you just have to put, like, all 110% effort into it and feel like, I mean, uh, and look back at it at the long run. It's just like, you know, did I put, give my all to it? And so, like, if it, at the end of the day, did I cheat myself or, you know, did I get myself better? Mm, good. good. That was good. Yeah, very good. That was good. Master every <laughs> every <laughs> student athlete needs to hear that right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? They need to hear that because it's like. <laughs> Coach Stu. Good. Yeah. Good. That's good. That is good. Because, very good. Because like you said, man, it's like, okay, or am I cheating myself? Mm-hmm. 
am I cheating myself? Because a lot of times we think we're cheating the coach. Or I used che- to cheat. Yeah, of course, of, course yeah. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. Of course. Of course, you were, You probably didn't touch the line. Of course I didn't. When the coach yeah. wasn't looking, you probably, yeah. Because when I was a freshman in college, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. Because yeah. I was like, I want to have fun. Mm. Like, And I wasn't having fun with basketball anymore. Mm. And after my freshman year, I talked to the coach. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just going to go ahead and transfer and just be a student. Like, I wasn't feeling it. So I had a chance to elevate my game, Mm. and I didn't do that. And I, I feel like, that. and I feel like, with me, my situation was me getting there. I had high expectations for myself. I wanted to play as a freshman. I wanted to start, and so really, in my back of my mind, it was just thinking it was like, if I don't give everything I have now, then at the end of the day, I'm not starting. You know, who's it? Is it the coach's fault? Is it somebody else's fault? It's, it's, it's looking back at me. It's my fault. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I felt like, you know, I have to have fun with it. I have to do everything I can in my, in my ability. So at the end of the day, if I am not starting, it's not because of me. It's just because the player is just simply better than me. Mm. See ownership, ownership, and taking on ownership. Anything. We don't want to take ownership. We don't. We want to blame our parents. We want to blame the coach. We want to blame, blame the teacher. Right. Yeah, exactly. The teacher yeah. don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> I did that too. I, like, we blame everybody. They didn't put the grades right. in yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to all the time. My dad like, what's your grades? I'm like, oh, like they, you see, they gonna put it in like, <laughs> pro- probably like a week before, like second quarter. I'll let you know though. I knew they had. I remember what was it? Progress report. Or progress? Yeah, progress yeah, reports, yeah. yeah. Man, I knew my grades was trash. <laughs> they weren't. Yeah. They weren't good. They weren't disciplined, and, and we'll get to that later. Yeah. I wasn't disciplined, and I, yeah. st- I still still aren't at times. So mm. still learning. Still learning my place. Yeah. Good. There's a story with Kobe, right? I was talking to shout out to my boy Pat Coin. Uh, he told me a story about Kobe of how he went to. Uh, I think it was some camp mm-hmm. when he was in high school, and he went around asking each player. Like, okay, so what do you do? Oh, okay. What, what time you wake up? Kobe did this? Yes, when he was in high school. He was like, what time you wake up? Oh, eight? Okay. Uh, how, <laughs> how many push-ups do you do a day? Yeah, that's definitely yeah. something he would do. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. how many you do? Okay. Uh, uh, how many sit-ups do you do? How, how much do you run? Mm-hmm. And he just made sure whatever they said, he did more. Mm-hmm. And he was saying what he said was, it's simple math. Right. It's simple math. To be better, it's just simple math. What, what are you doing? I'm going to do more. Period. And, you know, and that's that's something that I feel like uh, it's crucial, man. We think, uh, what's the secret? You know what I mean? Right. Like, what's the secret? Is there a secret drill? Is there a secret workout? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but at the end of the day, like you said, it's just simple math. It's just simple math, you know. And so a lot of times we look for a secret because, you know, we really don't want to do the simple, mm-hmm. the simple stuff. Yeah. My dad always says that he's like, son, there's no secret ingredient. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. What do you mean now? But. You know, he would always he would always say this. I don't know if you remember in practice, he'd be like, Don't get outworked. Yeah. And I get it now. It's, he used to always say he'd be like, Don't get outworked. He'd be like, Don't let him don't let him cut you to the baseline. Yeah. Don't get out work. And I get it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you weren't like a five star recruit yeah. coming out of mm-hmm. high school. Like I saw you play and I saw that you were good, but some people may have saw it later on. Mm-hmm. So did that give you like a chip on your shoulder? Like going into college, like okay, like I was I was slept on, and I kind of want to like prove myself. Um, not really. I kind of didn't want to prove myself to anybody. I kind of knew how good I was. I just knew it was like a size limitation. Mm. Most people looked at my size and kind of just threw me to the curve just because you know I'm not six foot guy. Mm. So you didn't I pass just, their eye test exactly. So yeah. it's kind of with the the draft this year too. I feel like if I was bigger, you know, I could be a little bit more high rank, but that's not going to stop anything. So I feel like. Once you get there, you have to stay there. It's just not just give it to you or hand it mm, to you. So I feel point. like the way I got into college the same way, just hard work and not working with the other guy. Because I'm, I'm not a big person, so I have to do other stuff better than other people. Mm. And so I feel like I'm taking that same mentality into the NFL now mm. and this year. It's just when I get there, it's just football at the end of the day. And I feel like I put in the work and I'm going to keep continuing to put in the work mm. of just you know, proving to myself that I can play in this league kind of the same way I did in college. Very good. Mm. And just like we was talking, I was like, man, were you nervous about the combine? You was like, nah. And see, I used to always get nervous before games. And, you know, it's okay to be nervous. But I've noticed the people who are really great, they don't let their nerves take them out of the environment they're in. Right. And it's like, if you've been doing it for years, it's like, what's there to be scared about? Exactly. At at the end of the day, I tell everybody. Because most people, like, they always ask, like, yeah, you nervous about this, this, this. I'm like, nah, it's just football at the end of the day. It's the same stuff I played in my backyard growing up at five years old. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, more fans in the stands or just for money or whatever. But I don't really do it for none of that stuff. I just do it because I love the game. So it's still the same game I'm playing. 
It's since, just, since know, Little League. Exactly. But it's just more fans and more people in like, the stands. So when you first got to college, like, was that overwhelming at first? Or did you just, like, hit it right off? Or what was the hardest adjustment, like, to college when you got there? See, because people don't know. They don't know the journey unless you yeah. go all the way back to YouTube. <laughs> we were talking about, hey, what are you going to do when you get to college? Right. All right so now you're leaving. Yeah. Mm. What was the hardest thing? I'll ask you. And what was your favorite memory at Michigan State? Uh, my heart, the hardest thing was really time management. Um, when we get there, you're waking up at 5.45 in the morning doing workouts, and then you're off the class right then and there. You want to take a nap before a tutor, but, you know, you feel like you have to study before the tutor. Because when I first got to school, I wanted to be a 4.0 student off the rip. Mm-hmm. And so I finished with 3.5 my first semester there, so I didn't get wow. to quite the 4.0. But You shot high. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I knew, like, there was sacrifice that I had to make and some things. So just getting my time management, like, on, like, track throughout there. Because I know most people, they get consumed with, like, just socializing and then just, like, their sport in general and just – all this other stuff, it can kind of overwhelm them. So, like, mm. they were lacking one aspect or another. Mm. And I feel like when I first got there, the three aspects of, like, football, social life, and just, like, mental and everything like that, I was able to hit all, like, in all centers just because, like, I had time management. I planned out my days, mm. and I stuck to, like, the my script that I put out for myself. Stick to the script. Especially mm. when, like, I'm tired. I, I don't want to do something. I want to take a nap. I, like, look back. It's like, you know, I want to shoot for this. I want to do this. I want to be this. So... I just stuck to the script the entire time. Then my favorite mem- like my favorite memories for sure. Uh, after we beat Michigan, my freshman year, twenty seventeen, uh, I got I remember getting there like twenty sixteen. They were three and nine season. A lot of people were talking bad about us, like we weren't going to be good. We ended up this being, at Michigan. Uh, yeah, at Michigan, the big house. They were ranked, I watched that. Yeah. They were ranked like number five in the country. Nobody gave us a chance. We went in there, shocked the world. That locker room was electric. You know, Coach D was excited. Everybody was excited. The state of Michigan, like, it was something I've never experienced before. And that was, like, something was you a freshman? I'll take with me. Yeah, I was a freshman. That year. Like I said, <laughs> that was my first big win, our big, our first big road win for our young team. It was just a lot of a lot of emotion, a lot of just, you know. Mm-hmm. I, there's a picture of me, like, I don't I don't have it on my phone personally, but my dad has it. It's, like, a picture of me, like, when everybody was celebrating, I was just standing in the back, just, like, looking at everything. Because it was, like, so much, like, to take in. Like, I just... I was in shock, so I was just, like sitting there watching everybody celebrate and just like super excited. So yeah, yeah it's definitely my biggest favorite moment. That's what's up. Maybe. See, I have a favorite memory in Michigan State because thanks to Josh, you know, he <laughs> he allowed allowed me to come up there on a trip to see you play. And it's not about football. It's food. I already know. It's the food. <laughs> and I don't even know the restaurant, but if you if you watch this, we call it crack chicken, and it. I, East side fish fry. It's, yeah, it's 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 mm-hmm. impeccable. I mean, the, it's like it's better than Wingstop, bro. Like the chicken is like. I mean, that's not too hard. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm sorry. He, he yeah. said Wingstop. Like, yeah, I like Wingstop, but yeah, the, like it's the standard. Their, yeah. their chicken is anointed. It's yeah. anointed, yeah, it's bro. Great. You can just you can taste like holiness. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you gotta try it out. Um, East, what's it called? East Side Fish Fry. East yeah. Side Fish Fry. Every single football player goes there throughout the entire year. We mm-hmm. have that in our uh, trainer room. Actually, Saturdays after the game, so mm-hmm. it's a big thing with us. Yeah. So if y'all watching this, East Side Fish Fry, you know, if y'all wanna, you know, throw some food, you know, sponsor the show with some food, you know, we'll take some wings. <laughs> we will take some wings. But yeah, that that was my favorite memory, man. Um, and it's just been a blessing, like just seeing you grow from junior senior year of high school to where you are now and that's really the the key element is just growth you know mm-hmm. whatever you're doing whether it's your corporate career you're in your academics or in your business or as an athlete you need to be growing and if you're not growing you're dying it's pretty simple right. absolutely and um one thing i i had is uh just like your diet and staying like to that plan you know with this mm-hmm. pandemic and the quarantine like how are you able to stay disciplined mm-hmm. and like stay motivated you know during this time you know because i'm sure that can be hard for any of us it's hard for right. me i've been eating a lot of bad mm-hmm. food because it's, it's food. tough to yeah. stick to the script mm-hmm. when you know things change that you didn't expect mm-hmm. right. you know it's easy to stick to the script or stick mm-hmm. to the plan when everything is going normal you mm-hmm. know everything's going right. as planned yeah. but when things go you know off track you know that's how around you, you how do you make sure you adjust and still be on the same track of where you're trying to go yeah uh definitely it starts off really every single morning i wake up uh i was get it i will have a random number on my phone texting me saying it's from a certain team that's kind of the, all the motivation i need to get up and just work hard because i know mm-hmm. what those teams expect of me if they draft me or not they expect me to come in you know 
the best condition as I can, you know, knowing the playbook and things like that. So really, every single time I wake up in the morning, I'll have a different number on my phone. And it's just like, you know, we're checking in on you. How are you doing? What are you doing today to get better? And I mm-hmm. go up to the, our Fairfield weight room. Um, I just, like, locked everything. But my coach, like, gave me a key to be able to go up there and work out by myself. And one of my mm-hmm. friends, uh, Alex Kaminsky, comes up there and works, works out with me, too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just keeps me, like, in track because, you know, I ride with him. He's always texting me, like, all right, when are we going today? And so, really, it's been really easy for me to stay on track just because, like, good people around me and just same, just getting those texts in the morning. Because I know, like, a few years ago, like, I felt like this wasn't – a dream I was even thinking of. Now I'm be able to live out my dream and and do all this stuff. So I feel like I'm just motivated just by that to just be able to stay on track. Because I know like there's hundreds of thousands of players in the world, and I'm one of the blessed ones in the 200 something I was drafted to be able to go to the NFL and live out my dream. So good, good, very good. I think good. a lot of times we miss it. Yeah, like we like we miss that we don't see the fact how we have an opportunity at hand. And really, that should be enough right. to motivate anybody. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the fact that you get the opportunity, that you have a chance exactly. to achieve a dream, that should be enough. Because they don't go away; they go to the next person. Exactly. I've said it before. Mm. There's, there's I've said hundreds it before. of thousands of players in the in the world they can pick. Why are they mm-hmm. going to choose you, and why are you going to stay? So, and yeah. people coming in every year, and like you said, you know, I remember you know being from Ohio, right? Uh, I loved watching like Braxton Miller and people like that, people that's cold. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dang, he's not starting. He's cold to me. He still is. Mm-hmm. But it's hard for even certain guys to stick in the league because it's people coming in every year. Right. Every year. Same thing with corporate, you know. There's somebody coming to get your exactly. job. Exactly. So you, you gotta you gotta be in your game at, at all times. Even as a coach, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. you're, you're gone. You're fired. Yeah. You know what I mean? New coach. Yeah, you yeah. know, and so yeah. And so there's always pressure. There's always and for those who are hard workers, it's like cool. Yeah. <laughs> we embrace that. Yeah. You stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Exactly. And I see the goat. Speaking of the goat, he's behind you. He is. Muhammad Good. Ali. Good. He would have knocked us all out and put us on the seat. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy that just from heavyweight, this is off topic, but to how the boxes are now, like mm-hmm. none of us would we don't want to yeah. fight any of them. Mike yeah. Tyson, any yeah. of them. Yeah. We'd have been dead. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so been dead. Oh well actually I wouldn't. I would have ran. <laughs> you would for sure. I would have ran. You definitely you definitely yeah. ran. I would have been screaming. Like yeah. I wouldn't even been in that predicament. <laughs> But um, there's yeah. two things, two things that I that you were good. talking about, two things that really like I was like, mm-hmm. wow, that's that's good. And it seems simple, but it's just so true. Mm-hmm. The first one was you said, what are you doing today to get better? Very good. Mm-hmm. And that's a question that everybody can ask themselves. Athletes, entrepreneurs, whether you're a student, whether you're a teacher, mm-hmm. whether you whatever you do, mm-hmm. right? It don't even have to be your profession. It could right. be uh, your personal, your person, exactly, spiritually, anything, yeah. exactly. And so it's like every single person needs to ask themselves, okay, when I wake up in the morning. What can I do today mm. to get better? Yeah, and it's mm. not even like it's like a big jump either. It doesn't have to be like a 5% jump. It can be literally just like a 1% or like a half or 1% growth. It's just finding little inches and little growth in, in between your days because it's not going to be a big jump every single time. Mm. Mm. And see, that's the thing. Like I remember I was, I was thinking about uh, – when I was younger and I was supposed to go work out, mm. I've told this story multiple times before, but I'd be at the park playing with my friends. And I was I always have to make a decision, like, because I had a trainer. I had a trainer that was supposed to train me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know why I'm laughing. Why? Tell the story. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm telling. It was, it was like three days away they're supposed to train, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's the reason why we're sitting here. We were supposed to be in the league. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you see what, what had happened was they need to be doing a 30 for 30 on us. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, I was supposed to go because. I needed to get stronger. That was my yeah. biggest thing, right? Mm. You know, I, I was smaller by nature, uh, my metabolism, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so the thing is, it may be harder to gain weight, mm-hmm. but okay, you still got you got to make it happen. Yeah. And so I had this trainer I was supposed to go to, and I, w- mm-hmm. I would stay at the park. Mm-hmm. I would Why? stay at Why'd the park because my friends would be like, come on, mm-hmm. we need you to play Your wiffle friends. ball or football or hoop mm-hmm. here, you know, but I really need to be at the trainer, yeah. right? And so... I remember thinking one day, like, you know what? I don't ever remember when I stopped going to that trainer. And what I mean is, like, I don't remember a specific day where I was like, I'm done going here. Mm. And it's like a lot of the failures in my life that I look back on, they happen gradually. It wasn't no specific moment yeah. where I could remember, like, oh, I stopped at this day or mm-hmm. I failed right. on this day. It just gradually happened. And it's the same with our successes. So you're talking about how it's not a 5%. Yeah, it's not a 5% jump every day. But four years from now, like you can now, you can look back and be like, 
wow, mm-hmm. I'm about to get drafted. Exactly. <laughs> the inches added up. Yeah, yeah, it adds up. I remember my dad used to be like, you know, son, if you work hard this summer, you can catch some of these kids. I'm like, what you mean, catch? Like, I'm, mm. I'm good. <laughs> Well, that was a problem. You know, I got yeah. comfortable. Mm. I was always talented, but when I stopped working on my strength and athleticism, then I hit a plateau. And sometimes we get comfortable with our God-given talent. We like, oh, I'm good. Up, mm. passed up. Right. You know, you, you got comfortable. <laughs> you 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 got complacent. Mm. Um, and with this process, like when you were comparing, when you were uh, preparing for like your forty and all of that stuff, when you went down to Fort Lauderdale, right? Yeah. What was that process like, and how were you able to put on weight, and you know, uh, you ran a great forty? Like, how were yeah. you able to do that? Uh, yeah, it's they have it down to the T. It's one of the best places to go to train in the country. Uh, there's a lot of specifics to it, but uh, my daily, my days would look like probably getting up at like six o'clock, be at mm. the facility by seven, train from seven to nine. Uh, have lunch or have recovery from like nine to ten. Have lunch like ten to ten thirty. Back at like eleven, mm. and then we're da- we're back to like training again for like eleven thirty to like one thirty, and then after that we have more treatment, and then you're having another meal on top of that. So like we're eating like three four meals a day, getting treatment, training, and things like that. So everything's really down to a T. It's really you just keep on top of yourself because they're not mm-hmm. forcing you to eat those meals. I'm not gonna lie to you; those meals are horrible. But they were tailored <laughs> straight to my body, though. Like right. it was like it's chi- high protein. Yeah, it was like chicken, but like no sauce or nothing. It was like look like Dang. white chicken, like nothing on it. Like vegetables I've never heard of. I'm eating like things like I've never heard of. Like so, it was like a lot of stuff that you have to stay kind of stay to the script. But one of my guys down there actually, Dark West Nard, he lives down in Florida, mm-hmm. and so I went and visit with him a couple times down there, and I was just asking him about his like experiences and like. Especially, he's been in the league for like seven years now. Mm. So I was really asking him about just his his draft experience. You know how the league has been, and he's kind of just kind of like you have to just continue to get better and things like that. You have to do things that other people don't want, like or not want to do. And like I'm not gonna lie, like some people like that I trained with didn't want to be eating the same entire thing, like the same thing every single day. But you kind of just have to make those sacrifices if you want to, you know, get to the NFL or get places you want to get to. Mm. So I was willing to make those sacrifices and do things. Like eat nasty stuff that I've never eat, probably eat again, but it was like just for the better. But the training was like really great. Like the guy knew what he was talking about. Uh, he, I gained I think like ten or fifteen pounds in in two months of like good weight. Uh, I got two faster, wow. got stronger, and so really he knew what he was talking about. And that's a guy that I would probably end up going back to when I'm in the league, like when I'm just training the off season. Wow. And see what 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 you willing to do? Yeah, yeah. What are you and, willing to sacrifice? And, exactly, because a lot. Uh, see, and I'm myself included. What we do is we rather have what tastes good than what's good for us. Mm. Yeah, you know. And so, oh, it's nasty, but it's nourishing you. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, good. But this tastes good, but it's destroying your body. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like what Same you want to with, with people and everything else. Yeah, everything oh, this looks oh, yeah. good. Or, yeah. But it ain't the best for you. Exactly. Mm. You know, what are you willing to sacrifice? You know, what are you willing to sacrifice? See, mm. cuz I never understood like how some of these Dang guys it. like John Ross and people are fast. I'm yeah. like, how do you get faster? Like <laughs> I tried and I could yeah. not like Hold on. I couldn't Hold do on. it. You say you tried. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm curious to know what you did. You about to get weak. So I had a trainer too. Mm. And see, shout out to my dad. He tried. He said he tried. <laughs> he tried. He put me in the best positions that I could. He, I mean, I went to personal trainer's world. Mm. I went to Ignition, actually. A lot oh, of pro yeah. uh, wow. athletes yeah. trained Ignition. Wow. And I got to shout them out. That was the best shape I was ever in. Mm. They had me doing like cross training, like football workouts. Oh, yeah, training, yeah. And I'm like, I don't even play football, but it, right. my vertical was getting better. Mm. They had me running yeah. 40s. And I'm yeah. like, I probably run like a, a, a seven flat. Yeah. You know, I, I can't be that fast compared to like these these super athletes mm-hmm. but you know what happened what happened I start partying and having fun in high school i was like i'm good i stopped mm. and look where i'm at do you remember see? the specific day when you stopped nope see mm. it just happens yeah. <laughs> yep i remember what i was doing i was hanging out more entertaining yeah. different girls and doing different things and i'm like oh i'm good you mm. know I'll, I'll be on varsity like my junior sophomore year that was a problem i wasn't shooting high yeah. goals right like hey i'm gonna play as a freshman right i didn't do that so if you're watching this, 
Just look at me and Jay. Good. This is what happens when you don't follow <laughs> yeah. the plan. And it's not that we some big failures, but it's just, <laughs> y'all, got, y'all got to understand the original plan. Right. Yeah. This dude was still is. I mean, he he shoots just as good as Clay Thompson. I'm serious. Y'all just don't know. Um, and I was like a Sean Livingston. I was a yeah. tall point guard. Yep. I was a six four guard, and we had it. But keyword, we had it. We had and it. We, we didn't stick it. to the script. Yeah. So, but this is what happens when you do stick to the script. <laughs> exactly. So y'all stick to the script, <laughs> elevate, rise to the highest, and Good. rise above so the situations. Good. And uh, greatness can happen, man. We're very proud of you, and um, you know, very uh, thankful to have known you over the years, and to just see like dreams can happen, dreams can uh, really come true. You right. know, and you just have yeah. to just really grind. And I, I'll end uh, with a few things. A lot of people are like, you know, quarantine and chill and all of this stuff. No, quarantine and grind. Mm-hmm. Good. In the middle of this quarantine, grind. You know, no matter what you feel like is holding you back, you should always find a way to keep working. Don't don't get complacent. Right. Don't get complacent at all. Like you said, what are you doing? What are you doing today to get better? Right. Very good. And so there's two yeah. things. There's two quick things that you know for a lot of athletes that feel like they're overlooked feel like mm. they are not getting the recognition yet that they feel like they, they can get. What is your advice to them? You know, you might not be well known right now. You know, what is your advice to them? Um, I honestly took it into like my mindset. Really, I don't care like what they have me as ranked. I could be the worst player in the country, the best player in the country. Like I'm always going to continue to work to get better. Like I'm not being watched. So if you ha- if you have a mindset to where you're just going to put your best foot forward every single day, things are going to add up eventually. I know mm-hmm. my brothers, obviously, like in, in high school, their their team wasn't as good, but they still were able to get a little bit of recognition. And me, my sophomore year, I had a lot of success, but I really still really wasn't getting recognition I felt like I deserved. And so really, I kind of just put that in the back of my mind. I was like, I'm just going to keep continuing to work and get better because one day, it all it takes is one person to notice me. Mm-hmm. And after that, it just takes off from there. And so I knew that day would possibly come. You know, I didn't know if it was going to be the next day or the next year, but I just know I'm working to get better. So when that opportunity comes, like a coach comes to a game or somebody reaches out to me I'm prepared I'm ready I'm I'm the best shape of my life and so really just stay prepared and just uh, you know you never know when your time is going to come so just be prepared for it mm, good. Very good. see prepared. I always tell my I tell my players like and it's sometimes it can make you think like dang but I always tell them like some of your greatest opportunities are probably ones you never even know you had because mm. exactly. a lot of you never know there might be a coach watching you and you was like I'm gonna chill today yeah nobody's just, probably here yeah it's I just it's that. just one day like it can mm. literally be one random day out of the year coach just pop, and it's like pops by your game and you're just taking the off day it could be against like the worst team in the country or whatever you guys are just blowing them out but you're just just chilling mm. i know what thing one thing that coaches really recognize about me they even go back and watch my high school film mm. and i was one of the best players on my team i didn't have to play i didn't have to play special teams but i went so hard on special teams every single time even when i was the, possibly the best player on the field they they see that recognize that like you know this guy didn't take a playoff even when he was already committed to michigan state even if he's already has all this recognition he doesn't take a playoff for mm. anything so i know like i i was in there i was in somebody's point i like point of time where i wasn't getting looked at at all and i don't take that for granted at all so i always go hard in everything i do 100 percent every single time i'm given an opportunity mm. very good high character guy and, absolutely uh, man your story is great we just want to keep bringing good stories y'all will definitely be having more guests and giving the opportunity for other people just to share their testimony on how good things can happen my last question mm-hmm. uh i think i asked this four years ago but just now in the current state of the league, who have been some guys you've looked at like in college and in the pros that you've like really like either studied or be like, hey, I like his game. Just like how Kobe loved Michael. I, I was seeing it on Twitter. He said Michael's uh, his technique was flawless mm-hmm. and I wanted mine to be just as flawless. Mm-hmm. So do you have somebody that you looked at was like, oh, man, he's a he's a DB or a defensive back that I like his game. I like his technique that I've learned from. Um. Honestly, I don't really look, watch techniques and want to like compare my techniques to other people. I kind of want to look at like intensities and like how much passion they bring to certain things they do. So like, it's really not people in the league. Like I love Tyron Matthew. I love his mindset, the way he goes about his business. Ray Lewis, he doesn't play my position. Brian Dawkins, safety. I even go back and watch Mike Tyson, mm. uh, Floyd. Just like kind of that mindset, you know, kind of that mentality, that attitude they bring to what they want to do. I know Floyd. Like I said, growing up, I watched a bunch of his documentaries. 
Like, you know, he wasn't put in the best circumstances, but he brought it every single day. Mm. Every single time he went in the gym, he was going to get something done. Mm. And that's kind of what I want to bring. Like, those are guys I kind of want to model myself after. Not just because their technique or whatever, how much money they have. Just because that mindset that, like, that they have, I kind of want to model myself after that. Just every single day. Like, even if I could be making millions of dollars, I still don't want to stay the same. I want to get better each and every day. Very mm, good. Keeping that hunger. That's good. It's important that we try to do good and yeah. show good uh, through our, whatever we do, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a teacher, mm. whether you're a coach. Uh, what good can you do? Not what can you get? Because a lot of times yeah. we're like, what can I get from this? What can I get? But how important is it to not just try to see what you can get from the moment, but what you can also end up giving? You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, like Coach D, I really, it kind of hit me kind of when I got to college because in high school, you know, little kids know you, but it's only like a couple hundred, but now thousands of people know who I am. So Coach D always said to us every single day was like, you know, be a light to others. So, you know, if it's just going out, somebody hits you up, you know, you, they want you, you want to visit somebody in the hospital, go do that. You know, if somebody wants you to like wish them a happy birthday, do that. It's just being a light to others. Cause I know when I was growing up, when I was younger, like if I seen a professional athlete, I would probably want to go take a picture with them or just get mm-hmm. a shout out or something like that. So like whenever I see little things like that, I try to want to do that for other people just because like I remember I was in their shoes at one point, just being that little kid, just wanting that autograph or just wanting that picture. Right. So anytime I see something like that, I always try to go out of my way, just, you know, just give them a high five or just like I see one person sign autographs or do anything I can just to be a light to others. Right. And and that's crucial, man, because you never know that small encounter can inspire yeah, a kid exactly. or inspire somebody, man. And so, you know, I think that and there's a quote that says, whatever you are, be a good one. Right. And I think it's important that whatever we do, we try to shine our light and try to inspire the next generation. So very good. Good. Good, good, good. Good. This has been a great episode. We appreciate you, man. We definitely appreciate, appreciate you, appreciate man. Uh, wish you nothing but the best. Uh, greatness is definitely in store. So, um, yeah, man, this has been another great episode. Um, and until next time, trust God and do good. You miss every shot if you never gonna take it. Blessings unexpected, you just gotta stay patient. Faith in your soul, never ever get tainted. Through the highs and lows, we just gotta stay brave, yeah.